Episode 13 of Passion for Performance. An interview with Dom Medandich, champion barista at Whitehorse Coffee. Okay, team, welcome back to the podcast. Wow, hasn't it been a while since I've done my last one? In fact, when I looked up how long it's been, it's been 16th of April 2020. So it was just into COVID-19 lockdown last year. And um, obviously that threw a lot of things into um, disarray. And the podcast was probably one of the things I decided just to put on hold for a while because it was... Um, there was a lot to get done. There was a lot of people to look after and um, I felt like I could help them a lot better by uh, interacting with people one-on-one rather than doing the podcast. It's, um, it's been tough. Um, we're now entering uh, a second lockdown in Sydney, just uh, a couple of days old and it's quite funny how I uh, I'm, I feel drawn to coming back to it now. But um I was lucky enough to score an interview with um, with a guy that um, it really strikes me as a really passionate guy, and um, when I see passion, I, my ears prick up. So, um, yeah, Dom Medanovic, um is the head of coffee at Whitehorse Coffee, the, our local um, coffee guys. Um, they sponsor HPT, um, but I've been going to Whitehorse Coffee for ten years now and um, they've played a big part in my life and my family's life and um, to to get a chance to sit down with Dom and talk about a lot of things uh, um, passion that he's passionate about um, coffee being one but um, rugby league being another it was yeah, it was ideal a chance I couldn't turn it down so um, it was a good chance to um, bring back the podcast with a guy that um, is does a does a lot of good stuff. So, um, yeah. So the last year, wow, what a ride! Um, it's been been a lot of negatives. There's been a lot of um, heartache, missing people, missing races, but it's been a lot of positives too. So um, we know that life throws a lot at us, and um, the the people around me and my athletes that I work with. Um, have been nothing but brilliant they've been adaptable and resilient and um, yeah it's a pretty proud coach to be honest so um, yeah it's it's hard to hard to know what's going to happen in the next couple of weeks it looks like the numbers are uh, evening out a little bit but um, there's various opinions of course on what might happen over this next couple of weeks hopefully Sydney gets away with a a two-week lockdown and we can um, move forward with a few more uh, a bit more knowledge and a a couple of restrictions and um, we can sneak our way out of this lockdown and people can get get back to um, earning their full money again so um, yeah let um, I'll let the I'll let the pod the interview with Dom take care of itself but just a little bit of background there Dom is an Australian champion barista yeah i i say um what a a good way of explaining this is if you could imagine yourself um passionate about something that really hadn't hit um australia's shores yet so he take take this back 20 plus years and dom is in his garage with a, a coffee machine making coffees for people his mates um, and you know there was hardly any people making coffee around at that sort of stage that was it was really early days and he was passionate about it and he followed his dream in that area and he and um, he ended up starting up a um, starting up a coffee shop with with Maddie Spram and um, that that coffee shop has turned into something huge they they now roast the, their own beans they've got factories they distribute to um, to some of their clients that uh, as um, as wholesalers, wholesalers of beans and, and coffee and, and everything around that. Um, they've got a number of shops in the Shire themselves um, and yeah, they're just a success story and Dom's, Dom's got his fingerprints all over that. So um, 
Without further ado, I think what I'll do is just uh, throw you over to the interview with Dom Medandic. Okay, here we are at Whitehorse Coffee, and I'm joined by Dom Medandic, and uh, otherwise known as Domtron. Um, the reason I've come to Whitehorse Coffee to talk to Dom is that he's a bit of a barista guru, to be honest. I've known Dom for a long time. I've had a big, a long involvement with Whitehorse over the years and uh, got to know you quite well, haven't I? I um, happen to know you're a bit of a football man too, so I'm looking forward to getting into a bit of NRL talk with you, even though you're a Roosters fan. I'm ready, I'm ready. Ready to rock and roll, okay. Um, look, welcome to the podcast, Dom. I'm, Thanks, Pete. I'm, I really appreciate you having me uh, into your uh, establishment here and giving me the chance to have a chat. So um, obviously with my podcast, it's all about performance and high performance and having a perf- passion for what you do. And I, I really, um, to be honest, I couldn't think of a person that embodies passion and high performance more than you. It's very flattering. Um, it's something that, you know, you learn over the years and have many people influence you um, in that direction. But, you know, for me, coffee has been the first and and only thing that I've really been passionate about. And it's been a a staying passion. And, you know, when you have an interest in something and then a little bit of aptitude and then somebody encourages you along that path, it can lead to amazing things. Yeah, that's that's, that's fascinating that you said that. That's the first time, even in our pre- uh, pre-recording chats uh, that leading down a path and someone has an influence on you it's I'm big on that yeah I, I, it, there's a person that really has able to spark an interest in you and just fans the fire yeah so you know I suppose the way that I even uh, got into coffee is uh, prior I was a um, hotel car park guy Mm -hmm. and um, I worked in hotels and moved around and was in banqueting and there was no coffee in banqueting you know I just served as a waiter and you know set functions up and things like that but I found my way into the restaurant when I uh, got into the restaurant on day two they you know instantly said do you know how to make a coffee (laughs) and um, I said well I don't even really drink it, to be honest. So, what, what, just dial back. What year are we talking here? Look, I, I don't even <laughs> remember. I don't remember. That's kind but of cool. this is prior prior to the Olympics, in Sydney two thousand. You know, okay. it's kind of in that era when I made that transition. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so, you know, it was definitely working in hotels in the city. In the city, I yeah. was working at the Sheraton Wentworth um, right. and uh, had a great time, mm-hmm. Sydney 2000. And um, when I was in hotel, in, in restaurants, excuse me, um, I moved over to um, Ridges Parramatta across from the race, race horse, right. yeah. race course. Opposite uh, Rose Hill. Uh, Rose Hill, mm-hmm. yeah. And race days were just, um, you know, something else, really. Yeah. And... Um, uh, I went out there and I took a role in, in the restaurant and, um, and you know, I went and I did this course. They sent me to do a course and it was one of the first people that really, you know, lit a spark in me and um, the coffee trainer there, his name was Mako Le Penna mm-hmm. and um, I don't know what it was, but it was something about the way that he explained things. I was, I was just mesmerized. You're and I, uh, It was something I was like, this is what I want to do. Yeah. I want to make coffee like this. Mm. And um, he was a, a, a great barista. He was actually a prior champion. So I suppose that, um, uh, you know, passion about coffee came across in his delivery of coffee training and there were 10 other people in the room but Mm. they didn't really take it as serious as I did you know I come from the you know our family that my father was always you know doesn't really matter what you do but you know learn properly so I learned to make coffee properly yep and um the next day I went to work and I just started steaming up a storm (laughs) making cappuccinos and you know within a week 
I was the guy in the entire hotel that the chefs and guests were asking by name to make their coffee. And really? We, yeah, easily. Straight up. Straight up. Go and you. then within a month, I started to make grumblings that this was not for me anymore and that I was going to be leaving that career path, which mm. was interestingly quite a big thing because I was a former corporate cadet, cadet mm -hmm. with the company. And those people are earmarked to become future general managers yep. in in um, the hotels. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it wasn't like not nobody leaving the fray of the hotel. But, um, you know, I knew that this coffee thing was something that just you. made me happy. So you, you kept on that path. I kept on you that path. And because um, and we're talking 20 years ago now. Yes. So that's, you know, like I can, I, I can... I can dial back probably, uh, funnily enough, like probably about 30 years ago yep. in the Shire, but just new to the Shire. And really the only coffee establishment was the coffee percolator down at um, Sylvania. Down yeah, near Tom right. Do you remember that? Bloody earth, I do. Yeah. It was the only <laughs> place you could get a coffee late yeah. at night too. Late at night. I used to go there late at night. And you know the great thing about it? It was all chicks in there. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, stop. <laughs> I yeah. tell ya, so I, you. So I wish I was a ladies' man. <laughs> <laughs> so you were on the you were on the yeah, ramp, the yeah. fast the fast ramp. So yeah, mate, that's awesome. And, Look, and so that's the experience you've had. The other then. side of that is that twenty years ago, baristering wasn't what it is today. Mm. You know, I think social media and I suppose you know the hipster generation has really glamorized. Um, baristering and cough being mm -hmm. a coffee maker but back in those days it was a pretty daggy job mm. and trying to find a job as an inner city cbd sydney cbd barista mm -hmm. was really difficult i got knocked back more times than i care to remember mm -hmm. and i ended up you know asking for a baristering job at some pretty lousy looking hole in the wall cafes <laughs> and like Wynyard Station and places that you yeah. would never buy a coffee from in today's day and age and they wouldn't even give me a job because I didn't have enough inner city experience. Okay. But I knew that's what I wanted to do and I mm -hmm. knew that if I just kept on asking and chipping away at it and trying to you know get better at my part-time job as a yeah. barista that I would land a full-time gig. And uh, eventually I did. So, yeah, cool. and one thing leads to another, you know? Yeah. And, and so then, um, were, you, were, were you from the Shire then? Or? Yeah. So, oh, you were? born okay. and bred Como. Um, yeah, okay. Um, so, Como West, um, you know, uh, so... In the bubble. I, yeah. <laughs> I traveled to the city on the train, which I loved. Mm -hmm. um, and... Um, Within uh, a year of being a full-time barista, I learnt about a book from America. And mm -hmm. um, this book was written by this guy in Seattle called David Shoma. It's called Espresso Coffee Professional Techniques. Mm -hmm. And in, in, in that era of, of coffee, you know, it was still really the internet was in its mm -hmm. infancy. Yep. And there wasn't much or any information shared about how to make coffee and get better coffee training oh, right, okay. at that next level mm -hmm. was 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 hard to come by and i heard about this book and you know amazon i don't think was really a thing ebay the, was the around was you, you know amazon amazon no the the, the book yeah. oh the book was called espresso coffee professional techniques oh and um I had to go to the Dimix. Uh, they had a store in the city called the Rare and Rare Rare Bookstore, Rare yeah. and Hard to Find Books or something. And I went there and I got it. And close to the sum of two hundred dollars later, I had to import this book from America and it <laughs> landed on my doorstep. And you know, I read this book cover to cover. Yeah, it's probably one of the only few books I've ever read. <laughs> and it felt like I had a superpower after that. You yeah. Know? Okay. And then at that point, I was like, okay, I'm ready to enter competition and I'd heard rumblings about competition but I didn't mm -hmm. know where to look to even enter or anything like that partly because of I heard that it, it, it you wouldn't believe the story if I told you but the man that I ended up working for 
in the CBD was actually a former employer of this Mako character that ended up was my first coffee teacher. Yep. And, you know, my first coffee teacher was a former barista champion and then his employer, you know, employed him and was really familiar with him and, you know, the impact of coffee that yep. it had on Mako. And um, so I, you know, got an interest in wanting to do competition and, and really seeing how far it could take me. It wasn't mm. ever about, you know, wanting to be the best or anything. It was just about love and learning and the passion for the craft. Mm. I just, I was... I, I it was loved an it. outlet for you. Yeah, it was mm. an absolute outlet. Mm. And... Um, so I started entering competition and I did the first one and I finished last. Really? Who cares? Mm. Because I learned more in that one day mm-hmm. being surrounded by like-minded people than I had in the past, you know, mm-hmm. three years of baristering. And um, it's interesting, you know, watching, learning, talking to, to like-minded people, mm-hmm. you know, like gets like and um being surrounded by successful people um eventually gives you success it does and um so the environment the the environment is the thing environment was there and um i'm a big one environment i went in my coaching in my coaching career i i i place environment as a huge um deliverer of success and mini environments. I'm big on mini environments too mm-hmm. because the, the larger environment needs to be able to encourage the breakout room, you know? Yep. And, um, and, and if you can have um, the ability to, to push that home with people, the, the comfort levels that they can do what they want and, and explore themselves, I think it's pretty important. Yep. So you were obviously provided with that, you know, that you, were, you, yeah. you landed in it because you and, were seeking it. And... Um I don't know. Sometimes I think that I got very lucky uh, to meet the right people, but there weren't that many people around. Mm. And in that era, I suppose, showing interest, people were willing to help you, the people that I came across anyways. Mm. Um, I ended up swindling a coffee machine from Mm -hmm. a friend and installing it in my dad's garage (laughs) and uh, practicing at that stage, um, I was buying with my own money 20 kilos of coffee per week. Wow. Just to practice That's and huge. screw around and learn stuff from mm. different coffee roasters. Yeah. And, um, you know, my dad would always be a bit cranky because I didn't <laughs> have correct electrical, electrical like oh, circuits yeah. ran, okay. run. So he's like, you know, squaring in Croatian and saying, you're going to burn the house down. <laughs> and I didn't care. Yeah. I just wanted to brew coffee, you know. And um, interestingly, it created a hub for other people. Other people learned oh, really? that I had this coffee machine in my father's garage and they'd come, they'd come over. For coffee. And so many people that are in the coffee industry now that are like more successful than me, Mm. had their first coffee in my garage yeah, nice and see I reckon um, yeah, see community now yeah so now we've gone from environment where you were able to feel that you could excel yeah and you're comfortable with excelling yeah because everyone around you was with everyone around you was comfortable with excellence as well yeah uh, I, I, I'm big on that but you you found a community now yeah now you you're accepted in, in life and, mm. and so that's good uh, look let's I want to take it in the... F- I've got this word that just... I love. Excellence. Mm. And... Um, what's, the, what's the term? There's a bit of a term in there called... He, he pisses excellence. Mm-hmm. So, you know, like... Um, I don't want to piss in your pocket, but you piss excellent, excellence when it comes to, to coffee. So, there's... When you're standing over the top of a machine, empty cup, <clears throat> ready to go... Mm-hmm. So what's driving you at that point? Like you've got a, there's a, there's a lot of stuff here that you've just, <laughs> they've downloaded there on yeah. me. There's a lot of stuff that's driving you context wise. Yeah. You know, I you mean, want to be the best, but, but when you're standing yeah. over the coffee, 
you're not staying, I want to be the best at this. Yep. It's coming out of you yep. as just something that you do. And well, I always put myself in the position that this is the last coffee that I'm ever going to make. And this is the first coffee that a customer is going to drink of mine. It's their first touch point of a Dominic coffee, of okay. a yep. white horse coffee. This yep. is their first, this is my first chance to, to give that, that person something beautiful mm. and, and to convert them to a coffee drinker yep. from a non-coffee drinker. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, just you making coffees at home? I do, I do. Yeah, cool. More, more often, <laughs> I'm pretty disappointed. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. See, that's a that's yeah. a high performer for yeah. you. You're never you're never good enough for yourself, are you? Yeah. Well, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, um, so let's relate that that conversation about excellence and what you what goes through your mind. Mm. You know, let's. At a practical level, mm. give, can you give me three things that you would suggest to the listeners out there today? Not about making a coffee, but how you how you think. What what are you? you know, what's driving you to be a high performer that they can pick up on and take to possibly their endurance sport or you know how they even their career? Yeah. Um, well, a big thing for me is passing on to the next generation oh. to inspire the next generation has always been a big um, motivator um, and you know instilling that excellence and passion to the next person um, and for me that's a it's a really big Enjoy motivator that. I mm-hmm. really um enjoy seeing somebody you know have those breakthroughs Mm -hmm. and and they don't need to be you know world class um coffees that the person's making but to see those real developments Mm -hmm. is um it's really special like you we're building community um and you know I really enjoy that. Yeah. So I suppose that'd be the, the biggest thing. The, the second thing I would say in terms of excellence, um, trying to remove ego from it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I don't know why anyone would settle for... Second best. Not second best, but you know, much less than that. Mm. Like if we can do something properly or the best of our ability or, or better than the last time, why not mm. push yourself in that, in that arena? Um, so that continual improvement and, you know, just not settling yep. to be um, average, mm. um, I think is, is, a, is a big thing. Um, lastly, wow, I suppose, you know, leaving a legacy, um, you know, we, we've only got one chance at life. Yep. And what, what's it, um, what sort of legacy do you want to leave? <laughs> well, it's an interesting one, isn't it? Mm. Um, oh, coaches think of that all the time. From my perspective, I'm, yeah, you know, I'm always thinking about what, what I can leave as a legacy. Yeah. I look... Wow. Um, I think just being remembered as somebody that wanted to share coffee for the community, bringing, you know, literally the world's best coffees from growing regions around the world and bringing those back to the Shire Mm. and Australia. Um, You know, I got once again further uh, you know energized by a trip that i had to seattle in 2005 yep i watched the world barista championship there um, in that time I, I was trying to become australian champion um and i prepared you know i was prepared to be in 
Seattle um, representing Australia, but um, actually Mako beat me that year. <laughs> oh, really? Wow. Um, damn you, damn you, man! But uh, <laughs> I went and I, I learned a lot about um, specialty coffee and and what the quality of coffee that the Americans had, even though they have the world's most horrible reputation of having you know terrible coffee in america but it's it's not the case mm. um, you know it's definitely a per capita thing that okay. you know the percentages aren't there but particularly you know if you'll have an eye open to it american coffee really is great mm-hmm. and particularly on that west co- coast that northwestern realm is where it all started it's where that man wrote that book in seattle that's yeah, where okay. he's from and um Seattle, Portland, San Francisco now. So would that person that wrote the book be one of the sort of fathers of good coffee? In, Absolutely. In, in America? Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. I would say the So he's portion. obviously had a, a big effect. That's trickled oh. down. I mean, the world's a big Numerous place now. Numerous people. So, yes, it know, is. A, the, yeah. it's, a, it's a world's a big mm. place, but it's a small place, mm. I should say, too. Um, you know, we're all, we all seem to be very closely connected. Yeah. Mm. So, you know, seeing what the Americans were doing and the... the quality and the vibrancy of their mm. coffee compared to Australian coffee at the time was, yep. was worlds apart. Yeah, okay. Um, you know, one of the advantages of living in America is that they're close to the Americas, mm. you know, Nicaragua, Guatemala, Colombia, so much closer. Yeah. So they have that, okay. you know. A feel of a culture. Proximity as well mm. to just to get those coffees easier in, yep. into America. And um, we hadn't really established ourselves as, you know, sourcing and purchasing those great coffees yet in Australia. And it was mm. something about, you know, really raising that, that level of, of quality in Australia. So, so you said, had, you've got a world view of this, obviously. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> yep. 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 Um, and, uh, you know, I suppose, you know, when you talk about legacies, you know, delivering great moments of happiness to people in the Shire through exceptional coffee experiences. Yeah, and experience, the, that's and, a good word. And, mm. and community that is mm. then built from that. Yeah, you know? I mean, as a guy that's been around Whitehorse for, um, what, 10, 10 years now, I think I was one of the first guys in the door there and had an experience off you and um, Maddie Spram that, had an impact straight away mm-hmm. you know i wanted to be around it every day mm-hmm. as you know yeah sometimes multiple times a day mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. yeah that's okay um look i want to so the the legacy thing is is really good because the legacy thing um segues into my next point that i wanted to talk about and that's training so um whilst you're training um like i train athletes i also train coaches so in part of my work, you know, internationally, I've done a lot of work um, through Asia and um, Oceania um, in a coach in World Triathlons um, coaching, coach education program. So, you know, I, I've seen you operating uh, like we're doing this podcast from your training room and I've, I've watched you coach people and train them to do what they do and do it your way, you know, the, the Dom way or the White Horse way, whatever you I want to put it so is there a pro when you've got someone next to you have you got, have you got a, a clear process in your mind yep we most definitely do um look we've been working on our training since uh you know week one okay whitehorse coffee flora street um and it's been you know evolved over the years and um we have you know a level system um and you know a training curriculum that we put all of our um, baristas and even all of our staff through whether they're they're even not a full barista yet they we work on them and develop them from zero skill to a full barista someone who would be competent to you know get on the bar and uh, perform at that level that is now the expectation Mm. you know it's the expectation not only internally as a culture but it's it's a customer's expectation now Mm. um so you know our our training curriculum is um solid 
<laughs> we're always working on it. Um, you challenge. Is it documented? It's documented, one hundred percent. Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, it was a very uh, important decision to to document all this sort of stuff. Yeah. If we ever wanted to sell the business, <laughs> makes yeah. it more valuable. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah. uh, no, you know, another big part that I'm passionate about is um, I'm. You know, I don't really want to let go of 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 training um, as much as I have um, been involved in it in the past few years. Um, but I want to step away and promote the next trainer um, mm. and next trainers, mm. um, particularly as the business grows. We currently have Dan. Um, he's been a staff member for over 10 years. Yep. And um, he is doing an exceptional job in mm. training as well. But um, we definitely have other staff members that I've already um, you know, earmarked yeah. to become you know, coffee trainers as well. Yep. And, you know, allowing them to, you know, put their stamp on it as well, I think yeah, is really healthy nice. um, mm-hmm. because they look at it with different, um, more modern eyes, if you will, and um, get a, you know, I suppose, more current feel of how things are in store and, and what would help mm-hmm. coffee makers, you know. So yeah, I think that's really, okay. really positive. Yeah, there, it's. Um, I think once you've had an imp- once you've been impacted upon, you you want to you want that feeling mm-hmm. to be able to move down. Like that's like I, I had an, I had a, an experience myself that I was impacted by a guy that led me to coaching. I saw it happen in front of my own eyes. I, I got coaching, and I I got a I've got to do that. I've got mm-hmm. that was that moment that you said I've I've got to be here and. You, you hear about it and you and you see stories on TV about it, but you're never really sure whether it can happen. But it definitely happened to me. Mm. And I, yeah, I've got to drive to this day to make sure that I can have an impact on people. Yeah, I, I like that, you know. And so that yeah, that drives me on a day to day basis. So you your um, so your pro you pro, so you process over outcome, isn't it? So I like the the outcome people worry too much about the outcome yes they definitely do particularly in the in the training um Mm -hmm. um you know process um they definitely worry about the outcome and don't trust the process which is tried and and true and the, the process has been proven to get results yeah so really adhering to you know the training that's um being outlined is mm-hmm. you know i'm a big believer in that anyways yeah, yeah. right now I'm, I'm a little bit scared about this turn of yeah. uh this turn of uh, conversation but i know you're a passionate nrl man as yeah. am i <laughs> <laughs> you're a, a roosters supporter which is yes, um, i am um which is quite handy because they're a good team yeah yeah um they um they they probably piss excellence too so um it's where do, have you always been a, a league supporter? I have. Um, you know, it's funny. I've, I've thought about this for a bit, and um, I think for me, the special thing about rugby league is that I believe it to be Australiana. And yeah, good I'm call. Mm. passionate about Australia, mm-hmm. and um, that's the the big driver for me yeah. is that it embodies Australian culture, which I have to be honest, I think coffee embodies Australian culture more than a lot of things in today's day and age as well. Absolutely. And um, so that's how I got into NRL. Yeah. And it was the early 80s when I you know, got into footy and um, you know, my cousins were Westies and uh, big para supporters and oh. um, you know, the whole bit, my uncle used to drive a GT Falcon and nice. you know, I used to have a Monaro myself, so I'm very much into Australian <laughs> Monaro, things. I bet you wish you had your Monaro now. Oh, I did, I do. It's uh, sitting on my wife's finger, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, I love the Chooks. I suppose the turning point to start supporting the Chooks was when, um, you know, the Super League, uh, NRL wars kind of were on 
and um, that um, uh, Brad Fittler had a contract with the NRL. Yep. And the um, Penny Panthers went over the Super League. Mm. So then they said, well, you got a contract with the NRL. So now, you know, he ended up becoming a rooster. And then, you know, it's in big- my opinion, he was the greatest player of that era. Yeah. And or one off talented, you can't argue with that. Super talented, <laughs> and um, mm. so there we are. The still having, was still <laughs> having an was impact on. now. Old, yeah. um, old Brad Fittler, bloody oath. And we'll yeah. see see that impact and see and, see how much he's learnt out of um, last year's experience because he's pretty hard on himself. Huh? He 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 looks at he the way he coached, and and he's not happy with not happy with his performance as a mm-hmm. coach last. Last year, last last series, yep. he reckons he let it get to him. Yep, you know he felt the pressure, which is uh, it's understandable. So yep. he's learning too. Yeah, I oh, look. I think we're all learning. Yeah, every day. Yeah, and to never stop learning and to want to learn is yep. is a is a really key mindset to have. I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you, do you find the football balances your life? I do. Mm. I do absolutely, and. Um, you know, part of being a great barista is um, making great drinks and understanding, you know, the provenance of coffee and how to make great latte art. But I really think the other side of being a great barista is being able to connect with the customer. Mm. And I mean, I'm sorry, we're in rugby league heartland in Sydney, yep. Australia. Yeah. And in my opinion, three quarters of the customers that come in have an opinion about rugby league, <laughs> love like rugby league or hate rugby league. So talking about rugby league to every customer that comes in, you're, it's not a you, problem. It's, you, you're, you're connecting and building that yeah. rapport. Yeah, exactly. And it, it, it softens the experience. It gives you something else mm. to talk about. It gives you a building block for mm. another conversation. You know, So it's definitely something that I've taken into my baristering career. Mm-hmm. And you know, just enjoy talking to people about you know so and people love it as well yeah like it's a very divisive topic you know league and um and it's great you know it's it's australiana it is that's what i do yeah so on the on the just moving towards the end then here the the coffee so let's look into the future where do you think we're headed um interesting times that's for sure um you know, I suppose globally, the forecasts for growing uh, interesting things. Um, you know, they've had problems in uh, Nicaragua with rust disease, coffee berry disease, oh, really? and, you know, producing less great coffees. Um, you know, markets like Brazil themselves um, as a nation and China are buying more coffee. So it's driving the price of coffee up. But there's other great things that um, uh, world coffee research have done in terms of um, developing natural hybrids of coffees that not only are uh, disease disease resistant, um, but they produce berry and Mm -hmm. fruit in their first year of planting and uh, um, good yielding trees. So, um, and not only that, they um, are scoring really good in terms of flavor. Um, so that's, that excites me uh, to learn about, you know, the, I suppose it's almost agronomy of, of coffee, the science of coffee. Um, and, and it excites me to know that, you know, in the next, hopefully 100 years, we'll have even better coffees and coffee around for for people to drink Mm. um for white horse as a company i suppose you know just trying to affect people's lives positively and you know that goes to it to our staff and you know making them feel proud that um white horse coffee they worked at white horse coffee Mm -hmm. and making them think okay look i want to get a job in hospitality or i want to get a job in coffee white horse coffee is the 
you know the, the first, first thing month. that they mm. think about when mm. they think about um you know getting a cafe job or, or any of that sort of thing yeah you know definitely the benchmark or you know not even the benchmark but I don't know, it sounds a bit cringy, I suppose, but maybe like the penultimate experience, yeah. you know, is, would be, would be, you know, I'd like to keep pushing and, and you know, delivering better experiences for people, mm. you know. Um, and that, you know, that goes for better, better coffee experiences, even internally with our own team. You know, every year we buy better and better coffees, Um Truth be told, I don't think we can buy better coffee anymore. Like mm, we're buying a couple really? of excellence. Um, I know you, 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 you've dialed into a, a lot of special, yeah. special places there. Like when you get the card with your coffee lately, it's it's that's been eye opening to me. Some yeah. of the the stories behind the the um, coffee farms. It's, yeah, I love that. There's a lot of work goes into it, so no, <laughs> I'm, it's, it's I'm glad to hear that that's I'm, the I'm really enjoying that's it. The, what you're experiencing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So look, um, that's that's exciting to think that coffee's got a future. Yeah, um, it's always going to have a future when you're talking about people, because I'll look back to your passion about um, it's coffee, but it's also the, the experience that the interaction that that has, you know, and I. You know, as a coach, I try to make sure that my athletes have a relationship with their sport as yeah. well. You know, don't don't just go to it and expect it to give you something. Yeah. You've got to go to it with a with your side of the story too. What do I want out of you? That's great. And what? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, look, it's been fascinating yeah. to get to know, to. I've known you for ten years. Um, coming in saying good day and um, learnt more in this last half hour or so about um you and coffee that's been just yeah eye-opening so thanks for thanks for the chat appreciate it wow what a great interview hey dom's um dom's certainly one of a kind and uh, when you spend a bit of time with him it doesn't take long before you you um it, it rubs off on you and you go away wanting to be a better person and being a better uh, being better at whatever you do in life um, so uh, super proud to bring that uh, that interview to you guys so um, I hope you enjoyed it next time um, I hope it's not so long before I hit you with another podcast I'd like to make it another month so um, let's um, let's put it on you to keep me on uh, accountable to that number so uh, if if you don't see one within another month after this, you've listened to this, feel free to message me or email me and uh, get stuck into me. Um, that's it for the show and um, we'll see you next time.